Hey there guys, DeAndre A.T. here and welcome to another episode of Subtract Reactions where we subtract the bullshit and give you guys honest reactions. So today I'm going to be watching a Watch Mojo video, first time I believe I have ever watched a Watch Mojo video on this channel. Now first right off the bat, right off the fucking bat, right out the gate, I just want to say I do not condone smoking marijuana. I'm not telling you, the viewer, the person that's watching this, to smoke marijuana. But if you do partake in this event, um, you know, these shows, I'm guessing, would appeal to you, you know what I mean? I'm guessing that's what Watch Mojo is saying here. I'm, I'm guessing they're saying, you know, we're not telling you to smoke weed, but if you do smoke weed, then these are shows that might appeal to you. And I'm not saying that, you know, I do, I'm just saying that, like, you know, these shows would appeal to me if I did, but, you know, saying that's not saying, like, I do. I'm just saying that, like, you know. Can we not do that fucking awkward, like, you know, oh, what's going on here? Fucking shut the hell up, okay? Shows that appeal to stoners usually are the most successful because a lot of times they're self-aware. Um, they like to break the fourth wall a lot. Plot lines can be surface level simple, but at the same time, there can be deeper messages woven into the fucking story and shit like that. And a lot of times, characters represent different people or different themes in society. You know what I mean? Just, it's all meta and it's all fucking deep and shit. Or it's a take on society or it's satire or it's fucking action, but it represents something. You know what I mean? Or it can be none of that shit and it's just fucking fun. You know what I mean? That's the fucking beautiful thing about movies and TV shows. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You know what I mean? So, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Let's watch this shit, damn it. These shows are worth a toke. <clears throat> uh, look. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shows to watch while you're high. I've heard about this show, but I've never seen it. Hot boxing like a motherfucker. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at shows that most entertain the stoner crowd, either due to trippy visuals, or because weed culture features prominently in them. Also, we are in no way yeah, encouraging you yeah. to take, but if you do, you'll yes. have something to Throw watch. Check in. Hey Marty, take a look! You built a time machine out of a 1970 gremlin? Uh, no. Marty! Number 10. Tim and Eric Awesome Show. Yes, Great job. Love Tim and Eric. This surreal public access style show is an excellent choice of viewing for the high and soon to be high. The intentionally amateurish style and hokey acting, which is sometimes done by celebrity comedians, are sure to have you laughing, particularly if you're taken in some herbal recreation. Do you ever wonder about what the caveman's did? And then she had to brush her teeth? Then use this thing, dummy! A lack of narrative <laughs> consistency is also yes. helpful since the high don't have very long attention spans. All in all, Tim and Eric Awesome Show Great Job is a wacky program that the weed and surrealism enthusiasts alike can enjoy. This is what life used to be like for Richard. <laughs> and look at him now. He needs your bones. Number 9. Jesus and Butthead. No! Excuse me, sir. Sorry. Which way is the dude with two butts? They get lost! Smoking weed may not be illegal anymore in some places, but you can still be breaking the law while you're doing it. The title characters of this animated sitcom are two teenage delinquents whose dim-wittedness, obsession with sex, and frequent viewing of music videos epitomize the stoner image and culture of the 90s, even if they weren't visibly using drugs themselves. That dude's pitching a tent. It's probably pretty <laughs> amusing when you're high to laugh along they with someone dumber the than you are. Tree. And these two butt munches, frequent laughing, and crude humor are infectious. We can't promise the show will help you score, but at least it doesn't suck. Number eight, Pee Wee's Playhouse. Yes. Hi, Nick. Hey. Hi, King. How's it going? Pretty good. Oh. <laughs> a bizarre children's show about He's a goofy man child and his time. adventures in a cartoonish house should be right up the alley of most stoners. The eponymous uh, Pee-wee's silly demeanor and many catchphrases are endearing no matter your age or mental state. Wow! Jumby, you must have a green thumb! Among other things. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. 
Speaking of which, the show's penchant for puppetry as well as offbeat animation, both traditional and claymation, Ooh, offers plenty man. of stimulating imagery for those on a trip. The show also has several interactive elements, like secret words, guaranteed to keep stoners engaged. Huey's Playhouse is a proverbial potpourri of pleasures for potheads. Aren't those nice pajamas? Yes, thank you! <laughs> Number seven, Freaks and Geeks. What the hell Freaks and Geeks, yes! Next week, man. Oh. Southern Rock yeah. Night. Yeah. Oh, this sorry. retro show, set in the early 80s, follows two siblings and their relationships with the title's social groups, the former of which features several characters who partake in cannabis, especially Nick. Sorry. The most notable weed-related aspect of the show, though, is the episode where the female protagonist, Lindsay, tries it for the first time and then has to babysit. Stop cheating! It's my turn to hide now and you're cheating! No, 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 I'm not cheating. Just give me some space, man. Her attempts to take care of kids with the help of a friend, well, hi, are definitely a standout of the whole series and a pretty accurate look at what the experience is like, at least compared to a lot of other portrayals in media. Judging has nothing to do with it. That's not what the dead are about. It's all about being connected and, and being free. Number six, Cosmos. Yes! Pink. Yes, the Tesseract! And project it, carry it to a fourth physical dimension. Spanning two miniseries, 24 years of time, oh, Neil Tyson. Sagan and Neil deGrasse Tyson as they walk viewers through the I'm history sorry, guys, of life, I'm like, the universe, and everything. I love this shit! How can we humans, who rarely live more than a century, hope to grasp the vast expanse of time? The series explains scientific concepts in a relatable and visually interesting way. Much of what the show covers can be astonishing while sober, but when stoned, the scientific information and the visuals, which include a mixture of CG, animation, and live action, are absolutely mind-blowing. Yes, it mind, is! You may as well make the experience a little bit smarter, right? Which second stands for some 500 years of our history, the blinking of an eye in the drama of cosmic I know, time. man. Five, Chappelle's show. You know, you can, like... And if you build a telescope, you can point it in space and you technically can look back in time because the light hasn't reached, show features a number you know, of references to drugs and marijuana uh, in particular. However, there's more so if you go to enjoy far enjoy enough in space to turn your choice. fucking telescope right around, fighting, theoretically, and you can fucking moments. see the birth of the universe, and it's like, stars brand what? Like, comments. what? Because space is expanding at a speed that's faster... Around. The light in this. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm missing Furthermore, the fucking reaction. The series right is now. numerous recurring characters show. and iconic. Think about that. You go far enough in space, sure you can see this planet. Like, and it's your fucking mouth, beginning, you're beginning to the beginning primordial ooh stages. And that's just one of like a million fucking other planets. The multiverse theory. Four, I'm sorry. Workaholics. Dave Chappelle's show is good. I have the entire series. Workaholics. The misleading title notwithstanding, sorry, Workaholics yes. is a stoner show through shit. and through. <clears throat> Following the misadventures of a trio of telemarketer slackers, this show features copious drug usage, including cannabis, by the main characters whose philosophy of hard partying oh didn't God. die when they dropped out of college. So here's the deal. We're selling weed. The trio's many <laughs> immature, gross, and shameless antics are also likely to appeal to the Mary Jane fan demographic, although these man-children do have a universal dopey charm. So, if you want to talk along with them or just laugh at their zany schemes, this is one great comedy to check out. Last drug dealer was pretty lax with payments, so... And I don't mean to be a dick about it, but one cool thing he did was he didn't really bring up money that we owed him. Number three, <laughs> Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> That's not very good. Use space words, real ones, not talking about space words. <laughs> Speaking of zany schemes, this Canadian cult hit mockumentary show follows a group of trailer park residents whose criminal enterprises verge on the strange <laughs> and or incompetent side. Fucking glasses, yes, yes. I'm not running your cigarettes for you, Trevor, like some old cigarette bar. The various cast members are frequent drug and alcohol users, and pot is a prominent feature of the group's criminal enterprises, as they grow the plant and sell it. Pot was also the focus of the show's third theatrical film, in which they campaign against its legalization due to it encroaching on their illegal business. Oh the show has God. also had an impact on real-world weed, since the stars are ambassadors for a brand of legal cannabis called Organogram. Ricky! <laughs> <laughs> Number two, Planet Earth. He's fucking fractal plane! Emperor Penguin leave the comfort of their ocean home and begin a remarkable journey. 
Similar to Cosmos, Planet Earth is a pair of miniseries released a decade apart that cover an educational subject. However, while Cosmos covers a broad range of topics, Planet Earth generally focuses, naturally, on our planet, its many inhabitants, both flora and fauna, as well as its beautiful landscapes and seascapes. With its gorgeous cinematography and engaging <laughs> depiction of the majesty of our planet, all set to a soaring, stirring score, yes. Planet Earth is a show sure to take everyone who watches it on one hell of a trip, especially for those on a high. With billions of ant colonies across the world's grasslands, all doing exactly the same thing, the theatrical score to this show is amazing! Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Oh my mentions. god, yes! Wow. Yes, you could tell. Look at them all lining up to get in. No, it's terrible, sir! This is where we process the woman who gave Wilfred, yes! Wilfred, I love this I shit! That, Ryan. Wilfred, yes! Okay, you'll pass down the you got to see Wilfred, you gotta watch shit. that shit. Uncle Grandpa, I don't, I'm not a fan of this. I'm really not a fan of this. Please, never! Number one, that 70s show. Yes, that 70s show. I'll, I'll, I'll let like that sweet, slide. But there's just something about salt. Nothing says weed quite like the 70s. This decade-themed sitcom centers on a group slide. of teenagers in Wisconsin during the aforementioned time. The group all partake frequently in marijuana use, usually represented by smoky 360 camera shots, during which the gang hold disjointed, random conversations that are usually only tangently related to the rest of the plot. Remember on the way to the hospital? Kelso saw that dog and he jumped out of the car because he wanted to go pet it, but he forgot the car was moving and he broke his arm. <laughs> the group's immature escapades and frequent pranks on each other are also a great source of comedy. All in all, that 70s show is definitely worth watching, even with all the threats to put a foot in our asses. I only shot you at 2,000 feet, so I could put 500 of them in each of your asses! To agree with our picks, check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day. <coughs> Alright. Alright, that was a good video. That was a good video. Oh, I'm fucking crying and shit. Oh my god. Watch Mojo. Good job. That was a good fucking video. Now, I agree with their list for the most part. I really wanted to see Rick and Morty on this list. Alright, I'm sorry. Rick and Morty should be on this fucking list. Community should also be on this list, too. Community's a good fucking show. It's funny. Why the fuck am I on that Dan Harmon tip? Holy fuck. Damn, man. Fucking, I'm all over Dan Harmon and Justin Moreland. Shit, I need to back off. Tell you what, there has to be some good anime. Are there any animes out there that feature stoners, like just with weed in general, you know what I mean? Tell you another fucking thing that needs to happen. Where are the, you know, weed stoner zombie movies? We had Shaun of the Dead, but like, come on, I need some more, you know what I mean? Like The Walking Dead, how about like Rick and the gang, you know, Carl's gone, I'm fucking, that's, and that's a fucking questionable last thing to do, I'm sorry. Why the fuck did they kill Carl off? Oh my God. But like, what if like Rick and the gang just like, came to a camp of just like stoners and like everybody smokes and they're growing some fucking crazy ass weed like they got crops like a motherfucker and like everybody's chill and cool as fuck and it's like a society where it's just a fucking just a fucking nice civil society and it's like in order for you to live here you have to smoke i don't give a fuck what your condition is you have to smoke marijuana <laughs> you know what i mean to like prove that you're fucking chill as hell and like it's just a good time, you know what I mean? They got fucking energy generators, they still got like PlayStations, and it's fucking meta as fuck because they play like Telltale games. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. If the zombie apocalypse happened like right now, like today, you know what I mean? I would be like this, just like The Walking Dead, I'd be like a walking pop culture machine amongst the chaos ridden zombie disease infected fueled world i try to survive as long as i can but then again that's like the walking dead zombies what if it's like the crazy zombies or like world war z zombies then that's a totally different thing that's like a fucking terrible ass fucking situation but we have those fucking movies to be like you know maybe we can do some shit like this you know what i mean so it's like a whole fucking thing right there i don't fucking know pop culture is a fucking curse but at the same time if some crazy shit actually happens it could be like it's a reference guy be like oh shit look this is what we should do you know what i mean or maybe this is what we should shouldn't do because it didn't
didn't work in this movie, and it's an example, you know what I mean? It's a field guide. You just gotta know how to fucking work it. You gotta know how to take it. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, guys. I'm fucking sorry. I'm just rambling on right now, okay? I'm just rambling, I'm ranting, I'm just talking about a bunch of shit. That's what I'm fucking doing. By the way, if you're wondering what this, like, wooden stick is, this actually used to be a cane that I bought in Florida when I toured Full Sail University. I uh, went to like their backstage pass tour studio thing and uh, this was like two or three years ago and I was going to go there but I couldn't because I'm a broke nigga to be blunt. I'm just putting it out there. I'm being blunt. But I bought this when I was down there um, and then I brought it back home and over the course of time it's just deteriorated. I, I bought it in like a fucking convenience store somewhere, so it's cheap as hell. I think this was like five bucks. You know what I mean? So it's just super fucking cheap. Um, and then I had dogs and people and brothers that ultimately wore this thing down. So this is what remains of it, but it still holds some kind of sentimental value. Isn't that fucking weird? It's fucking weird, man. It holds some type of sentimental value to me. I don't know. It's like I look at it and I remember that fucking adventure of me going down to Florida. And I went there with my fucking mom. I saved up all that money to do that and everything. I paid for, like, the plane tickets and all that shit. It was, like, almost a thousand dollars. I paid for the fucking backstage pass price that you have to pay at Full Sail University. I paid for all that. And it was, ah! You know what I mean? It was fucking crazy. But as always, guys, if you like my reaction, be sure to like and share this video for me. And if you're going to do that, that would be comment. Tell me what you react to in the future. And if you're going to do that, that would you hit that subscribe button. Join the family, guys. I'll talk to you all later. And, uh, yeah. It's my reaction. <laughs> but, uh, I'll see you guys soon. Peace!